Hello everyone, welcome again to the final module 3 of the Integrated Math 2017. Okay, like and subscribe, share with your friends. Without further ado, let's get into it. Question 31. The value of the limit of, as x approaches negative 2 square root x squared plus 5 is, okay, so you're going to simplify this by plugging in the root. When you plug in the root, you're going to apply the exponent rule that says when you have a or any value to the value of n, then that means, oh, if you have a value of, with the n outside the bracket, it is still the same as when you exponent it properly. So if n is even, so if negative 2 to the 2, that is the same thing as negative 2 squared. So the square root of 2 squared plus 5, that is what it's saying. Then, when you expand it further, the square root of 4 plus 5, which is the square root of 9. So, therefore, that is 3. Okay, next question. Question 32. So, the value of the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 times x plus 4. So, you're going to simplify the x squared minus 1 divided by that by simply saying you're going to factorize x squared minus 1 into 2 x plus 1 and x minus 1. Remember, the power rule. Okay, So rewrite 1 as the 1 squared. So you're going to say x squared minus 1 squared. Why? Let me show you why. Because we want to apply the difference of 2 squares. When we have the difference of 2 squares, then we can have x plus 1 times x minus 1. And when we have that, then we can eliminate one of the values in the denominator right there. Okay? So we're going to cancel the formula and we're going to have the limit of x approaching 1 of x plus 1 divided by x plus, 1, x plus 4. We're going to say 1 plus, we're going to plug in the value now, say 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 4, that is 2 divided by 5. And that is the choice A. Okay, question 33. Given that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and g of x is equal to x minus 3, then the limit of x approaching 3 of that is, so the limit as it approaches is simply going to be, you're going to plug in the value of x, right? As I said before, you simplify it, it's going to be equal to 0. That would be. Question 34. Given that f of x is equal to x ln x, then the differentiation of x is, okay? You're going to differentiate x ln x plus the differentiation of ln x. Okay? What does that mean? You're going to, when you differentiate x firstly, you're going to get 1. When you differentiate ln x, you're going to get 1 divided by x. So when you add them back together, it's going to be ln x divided by x. Right? So, simplifying 1 times ln x plus 1 divided by x is equal to ln x plus 1. Let me explain. So the ln x, um, the ln x plus one divided by x times x cancel. So you only have the ln x and the one that you had when you cancel them. Okay. Next question. Which so of the following rules is most suitable for differentiating f of x is equal to five x plus three? Okay. So remember, in my previous videos, I told you that. The differentiation of x is inaccurate because it tells you that you're differentiating x. But what if you have a value of x like 5x plus 4 or 10x minus 3? Those aren't x. Those are values of x. So in this case, we have a value of x here, 5x plus 3. And if you want to attain the value when you differentiate, you have to use a chain rule. Why? Because the chain rule states that the differentiation of u with respect to x will in turn gives it dy dx. Okay. Okay. Question thirty-six. A firm's marginal profits in thousands of dollars is given by the function. The differentiation of p is equal to zero negative zero point eight x plus six. If x is equal to zero point five and p zero point five is equal to eight, then p x is. Okay. So. First of all, if this is differentiation and we're trying to get to the original equation, then we have to integrate, do the opposite of the differentiation. 
So if we integrate this and use the sum rule of splitting them into parts, we can find the general equation, right? And we realize that the general equation was negative 0.4x squared plus 6x, <coughs> right? <coughs> plus 5 one, because that is a c. Supposed to be a c here, it's plus c. Question 37, if g of, of, of x, g of x is equal to x squared minus 9 and the critical values of g of x are, okay, x squared minus 9 is equal to 0, we're going to add 9 to both sides, why? We're trying to get a value of x, you cannot have any, any additional coefficient or operation being done on x for that to be x. So, when you transpose and you simplify, and you find that x is equal to the square root of 9, you're simply going to square root that, and you're going to get x is equal to 3. Remember that the square root rule also says every value that is square root is a positive and negative as well. So, that's going to be the choice D. Question 39. R, R of x is equal to 15x squared plus 6x minus 4. If x is equal to 2, then R prime of x is equal to, so that's the differentiation of 15x squared plus 6x minus 4, that is equal to 30x plus 6, right? Then we're going to plug in the limit 2 into that, and we're going to find that the answer is 66. Answer is D. Okay, 40. The integral of 5 divided by x, okay, let's quickly go through this. You take out the constant, which is 5, outside, you find the integral of 1 divided by x, that's ln x, that's 5 ln x, 40a. Okay, 41. Function is defined as, <coughs> okay, for this one, we are going to try to actually reason this out. Okay, so for a function to be continuous, it must work for all functions that is under the bracket. So this one, we get the, the, the limit of x approaching a half. So it cannot just work for one. So if we do the quick math right now, so two times a half will is equal to one, right? What is one less than uh, um, is one less than a half? No, okay. <coughs> so that cannot work for it. So it's not continuous. <coughs> so is it? So it has to be discontinuous. If, if if the value does not work for one of them, it cannot be continuous. So it has to be discontinuous. But it does work for the second one. Let's look at it. Four times a half, so that is going to be two plus one is greater than a half. So that means it works for one value. Okay? Question forty two. If y is equal to sine two x, then y prime is equal to alright, let's solve this. Okay, so you apply the chain rule as I said because you have a value of x which is sine 2x, not x. So when you differentiate, <coughs> you're going to call the value of x which is 2x, um, u. Okay, so when you differentiate u of sine, you're going to get cos u. When you differentiate 2x, you're going to get 2. Combining those two again, you're going to get cos u times 2. And then you're implementing back the value of u which is 2x, you're going to say cos 2x times 2. Okay, simple. <coughs> that would be D. Okay, question 43. The integral of 2 divided by x squared. Okay. <coughs> you're going to simply just take out the constant, as I said before. So you're going to have 2 times 1 divided by x squared. You're going to implement a, 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 a rule that said that the denominator is always a power to the negative. You're going to apply the power rule, as I said. And then you're going to simplify, you're going to have um, negative 2 divided by x now. So negative 2 divided by x comes as a result of you subtracting the power, after using the power rule. You're going to have x, man, x to the minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1. Okay? Then you're going to have negative 2 divided by x. As I said, you can pause the video, you can understand it clearer by this reading. Question 44. The integral of 1 divided by 5x minus 3. Okay. 
So you're gonna simply apply the substitution as I says as I say. You're gonna take out the constant, okay? One divided by five is a constant, because you have in this case the value of x in the denominator, not in the numerator this time, the denominator. So when you use the integral, okay, you're gonna have one divided by five times ln u, one divided by five times the original value of ln. You're gonna simply just rewrite it back in the original form. I'm not gonna touch it. We're just gonna simply simplify it for the people. Okay. So that is the choice B. Okay. Question 45. Given that y is equal to ln x divided by x, the derivative of y with respect to x is. So if we derive it, we're gonna apply the quotient rule because we have the x value in the denominator. So when you apply the quotient rule, you're gonna simply differentiate ln x, right? And then you're gonna differentiate x. Okay. So therefore, it will be the differentiation of, of ln x, 1 over x times x minus 1 times ln x, okay? So you simplify that further, and you get 1 minus ln x divided by x squared, which is equal to 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. That is answer. <coughs> and that is a choice. Too. So, as I said in, in, in the introduction of this course, all resources will be posted in the description with further explanation and additional help for your exams.